Okay, so now welcome to Best of Basics workshop. This workshop is sponsored by IEEE and I am Samantha Avelin and this is Tomas. We are going to be providing you this workshop today. So our mission is to help students that feel lost and help them become successful de developers. The, the way that we want to do this is by helping them to bring their ideas to life. Our way to doing this is through programming. But before we begin, we have to find your motivation for programming. Have you asked yourself why so, so, for some people it's so, so easy to learn to program or so easy to learn different things or to do many things at the same time? What I have found is that the difference between those people and who I was one year before, or maybe you, if you feel that you have a struggle to code, is that they have the motivation to do it. And actually of all, all of us have the motivation we just need to reconnect with it. And that's why we're going to start today by asking ourselves three important questions. I recommend you to write the answers down because it's a really good exercise for you to really think about the questions. And the first one is, why do you want to learn to code? There are many skills around. Why do you want to learn this one? In some cases, it could be because I want to get a job that has to do with programming. In other cases, I just want to pass a class. But there has to be a really important reason for you to pass that class or to get that job. So that is why it's really important for you to answer yourself these questions. Why do you want to learn to code? Then the next question is, what do you want to get out of this workshop? This workshop, this is the first session and we will have the next session in Monday and together it will be three hours out of 168 hours of your week. So there has to be a good reason what, why you are spending this time with us. So ask yourself, what do you want to get out of this workshop? And with that in mind, ask all the questions that you have. Make the best of this time for you. And our last question is, where do you see yourself as a programmer? If you have the motivation to learn to code, where do you see yourself in the future with the knowledge of programming? Do you feel like you have to be a programmer or that you want to be it? These, these questions are really important because, uh, for example, we don't find, or I think almost never people say, I don't have time to go to work today. And the difference is that they have the motivation, maybe paying the bills or eating out this week, but there is a strong motivation to go to work. So it's the same when you want to learn a new skill. You have to be aware of that motivation for you. We hope that throughout the workshop today, you reconnect with this motivation and also you awaken your, curio your curiosity about programming because that's the key. Uh, also, to go along all these questions, make sure to ask all the questions that you have through the, through the chat. I will be answering them. And if they are long or really important, we will answer them in the last 15 minutes. But please ask all these questions. And now I leave you with Tomas with the basics of MATLAB. Awesome. All right. So um please don't forget to ask your questions in the chat the most basic of a basic it's a variable right so what you're seeing in the screen it's a command in which i assign a value to a variable so in this case the number five is going to be assigned to the variable x okay so at this moment, x is going to be equal itself to 5. The value 5 is represented by the name x. All right. So at this moment, OK, it's really not that useful, right? I mean, it's just a number and uh, one letter. I can use each of them interchangeably. So what do we do? We can make lists. And mathematically, we call those vectors. So let's say 
I have five people, right? And I want to know how many, what's the amount of uh, women and the amount of men that I have in the room, right? So at this moment, I have a five, the total number, then I have two men and three women, let's say. So I have a vector of five, two, three. I can make this anything I want, right? But just is gonna be a list. We can, we can think of it like that. So in MATLAB, how do I tell MATLAB, hey, I have a vector. It's more or less the same that we did with the number, but in this case with brackets and we separate the elements of the list of our vector with commas all right so if i run that value in matlab i can get x is going to be equal to the vector five two and three and if you have not opened matlab and you are able to i recommend this is a great time because we're going to do really hands-on work more ahead so what happened then I want to have a matrix, you know, a more complex type of uh, list, a more complex type of uh, aggregation, agglomeration of values. So every time I use a comma, it has the same the same type of uh, syntax, the same way I can put it in the MATLAB command. But now every time I have a comma, I have a different column. Okay. Now I want to go to the second row. So I have five, two, three, and then I want I want to go to the next row. So I have a semicolon, as you can see here, between the three and negative one. Then I have, again, three columns, negative one, zero, three. So this is the matrix I would be telling MATLAB Y is equal to. So now that we, we said before, right, that X and five were not equal, and it would, would be the same thing to use X and five. They're both one character length. Um, if you have these kind of matrices, and especially if they're big, they can be a thousand by a thousand, or they can be whatever size you want. They can all be represented by just one letter, in this case, Y, or more than one letter, maybe. Now, let's say I wanted to make a vector. I want to make a vector, but there is a logical order to the vector, okay? So in this case, MATLAB has, there are a couple of ways to do it, but this is one of the most logical. I have a minimum an interval and a maximum, all right? So I have a zero and then I want, hey, give me all the numbers from zero to four, right? All the numbers with a total of one, right? So it's gonna go, it's gonna go zero, one, two, three, and then to the maximum four. What happens if instead of this one, I put a 0 0.5, I would get zero, 0 0.5, then one, 1 1.5, then two and so on. It is, there are a couple more ways to do it, but this is very easy to understand. And this is a way to make logically um, concatenated vectors. So what happens if I want to update a vector? If I want to, I can make operations between vectors. So again, I want to, this five to three is the same one that we had before. And I don't want five to three. Let's say that, you know, uh, we have, we want to add this vector because yeah, we do want to add that vector. And you do it, and x will be update, updated to the vector 6, 3, 4. That's going to be what happens. But there's one catch. I can use uh, MATLAB and most programming languages let you do this. Let you use the previous value of x to update it to a new value. So if I run instead of that, I run this, right, which is x equals to x plus 1, 1, 1, right? X before the line is ran, before I tell MATLAB this thing, x is going to be the value above. x is going to be 5 to 3. And then when I run it, x is going to be equal to 1, 1, 1. All right. Yes. All good? All right. So how do we actually code, right? What is it to, to make a script and, and do stuff with MATLAB? So... The basic is we make operations from variables using expressions, expressions, functions, and operators. So let's say we create our vector x, right? We create a vector x with some interval, a minimum and maximum. And then we have to, we want to make a function out of it. So x is, goes from zero to pi, and we just want to make the sign of x. This sign function, it's pre-built in MATLAB. And if I just put a vector, it's gonna take the sign in radians of each element of X, right? It's gonna give me some elements of Y. 
then I get the C and I get a custom function, right? I get the X, you know, I want the X to be squared. This is the squared function and plus the square root of X. Okay, so what's happening is I'm using expressions, I'm using functions to make new variables. And, and this is how we begin to code. We make mathematical manipulations, we make sorting, we make very various things to change and manipulate the variables we begin with. Now, what are some expressions? Okay, so you can have mathematical expressions that we talked before. Now, most of them are functions like sine and square root. So I just put in a value or a vector or a matrix and I get the sine or the square root of each of the elements, right? So these are very easy to use. And then I have these kind of operators. You have a plus, you have minus, and there's something you can see, right? For example, why do you have this dot? I have this period right here, and then the little peak that tells me that this is an exponent. Same thing with the multiplication. So this is what happens. MATLAB is oriented for matrices. MATLAB is uh, short for matrix laboratory. So if you just use the peak and then, a, and then an, an exponent, what MATLAB will try to do is per, it's per, to perform the um, matrix, uh, a squaring a matrix. And that can happen only under a certain conditions. So if you do this with your random vector you generate, you're gonna get an error every time, almost every time. So what happens if I want, if I have a vector, let's say five, two, three, as before, and I use just the peak and the two, I'm gonna get an error. But if I use the point, I'm telling MATLAB, hey, I don't want to perform a matrix squaring. I just want the square of each of the, um, of the, of the elements. Same thing with multiplication. Let's say I have two vectors of equal uh, dimensions. I'm gonna multiply the first with the first, then the second with the second, the third with the third, and so on and so forth. Now, there are some commands, not some mathematical expressions that we use for variables, some commands. So for example, I say plot, I give MATLAB some data and MATLAB's gonna plot the data for me. Uh, I'm not doing any mathematical operation there, just graphics. So that's one type of command. Then sort, you can use sort to sort your data, maybe alphabetically, if you have uh, strings and words, maybe numerically, you know, from smallest, from lesser to greater and so on. A scatter, maybe it's a different kind of plot uh, just for detrended data, data that's not related one point to the next, so you don't have lines. And our friend read vars. This is a function we use to import data from somewhere into our MATLAB workspace. Now, let's see, let's dig a little bit into the plot function. That's gonna be a really important thing today. So for the plot function, you have to make sure you have two vectors with equal dimensions, right? So if I have X, right, to be this random um, vector from zero to two pi, um, each one of them uh, with 0.1 interval, I can make the vector Y then. Y is gonna be cosine of X plus the square root of X. And I'm gonna get, uh, and if I do this, this line plot X comma Y, I can get the plot of this function, you know, each of the points in X and then each of the points in Y. So instead of telling you this, let's work that example. And if you have MATLAB already open, that would be awesome. So you can do this with me. All right. So I'm gonna go to MATLAB real quick. I'm gonna delete this error. So I have x is equal to zero, I have my colon, 0 0.1, I have my colon again, and I have two times pi, right? I'm gonna use the semicolon at the end, that's something you should always do to prevent MATLAB from printing all the values. I don't want these values to be printed in my screen. So I just wanted to go to the next line. Okay, I got it, okay. now. Oh, and see how you create the memory space. There. Yeah, you create the memory space. And now all of these values are assigned to X. X is a shortcut to get to access these values. Now I hit Y. I want Y to be equal to 
let's say what we had before, cosine of x plus the square root of x. Okay, I have all these guys right here and boom. Awesome. So now I want to plot this. I just hit plot x comma y. I hit enter and I get this. Oh, so MATLAB did, did plot everything here. Okay, okay, that's that's something useful. I, I hope you can see where, uh, what, what kind of stuff can you do, right? And you can make automations, you can make loops in MATLAB. That's gonna be real interesting in the future. So mm -hmm. any questions so far that we can, that, that we should answer? Or, or do you need more time to to do what Tomas just did in MATLAB? Can you open MATLAB just for them? I can open MATLAB. All right, it's just these three lines. X is equal to zero colon 0 0.1 colon two pi. Then Y, it's gonna be equal to a cosine of X and then the square root of X and then just plot. So, I think should we we're do, good. give it a little time, or are we good? It seems we're good. All right, let's go. So, okay. So, where does data come from? We can do what I just did, which is make up the data. And I'm not saying that's something bad or anything, just that it's data I generated by myself. Right, so I can make a variable called x1 and the values to be any arbitrary values I chose can be real, can be imaginary even. And I can choose x2, right, which is going to be a logical vector as we did before with some interval, with some way of building, but at the end, something that's generated by me. But let's say you're in a lab, you made an experiment, you went to the field and you have data stored in a file right in a file can be i can be excel can be comma separated value csv can be txt files matlab has a various way of various ways of reading those so you can use functions like read vars read vars to uh import that data that you have in your excel onto matlab that's going to be really important so Let's dig a little bit deeper on that front. You have for data from Excel. Okay, let's say your Excel looks like this. Okay, you have some time stamp, some time window, and then a voltage. Okay, so what you will do is that you will import this data using this function over here. So if you have the data, your data looks like this, and you're on this line. Now, read vars is a function that allow more than one output. So if I do this time and voltage, each of them are going to be a different variable. I'm going to create a variable called time and I'm going to create a variable called voltage, right? And it's by doing read vars, my data.xlsx, which is the Excel extension. And I will give this time to be all these values from 10 to 60 with an interval of 10 and then a voltage with the values I collected from my experiment. All right, if we can, let's work that example once again. So if I come to MATLAB, I say, okay, give me one second. All right. I can open it here for you. Yeah. All right. We can, oh, we can see we're reading uh, data from the sample data.csv that this file, it's in your zip files that we sent at the beginning. If you can download it now, because we're going to do even more cool stuff down the way. So um, for now, sample data.csv, it's where I'm going to use this data. I'm going to use the function of plot once again. And one more thing, I'm going to add a title to the plot. You're going to see how it will look. Let's go. I will say time, comma, voltage is going to be equal to 
read vars this function and within read vars i'm gonna put this the the apostrophes mean that it's a string let's say a word when i use a word in my lab figures as a string and that's the way i should put the name of my file okay so let's put sample data dot csv don't forget the extension of the file all right i hit enter and you can see right here on my workspace on the top right you can see a time and voltage the two oh. variables are just created oh, and show them how to see within the variable all right if you do, nice. yeah that's nice if, if you say all right i want to double check what my variables look like from inside i can double click the variable if you double click it my lab will open this excel like with this uh worksheet like uh window and you can see the data yeah, right? that, that's good if you want just to check that everything is okay that mm -hmm. you imported perfectly so you can check there mm -hmm. so same thing with voltage i can do the same thing all right so if we come here let me close these guys over here and let's say again i want to plot time comma voltage you have to put within parentheses that these brackets are only for for uh, assignments i do it i put my column semicolon and i get this oh i got something okay so matlab lets you do a lot of stuff to a graph this is the simplest generated graph so we can add labels we can add grids we can add titles there's many things we can add to one plot to make it be more friendly to give more information to be more complete so let's run and let's say title easy as that matlab is very easy and very intuitive in some senses so if you want a title the function is called title and let's say sample data signal so i, I have title sample data signal or you can choose any title you hit enter you go back to your figure and see oh we have a sample data signal title in our figure okay so yeah and, and try to title your graphs it's really good for people that read <laughs> your work yeah and, and and if you're going back to your work maybe in a few months a few years if you have them titled it's gonna be a game changer but you have, for example, X labels, right? And you can say time in uh, milliseconds. So I just put X label, the function, it's a function that I know, it's from MATLAB itself. And then I just put a string, I can put here whatever, but I wanna do this. Oh, oh I just got a label. You can do this with many, many things. Let's try and just have just one more. One second. One more. And you can see, oh, we have a grid, right? We have the space divided within. Okay, let's go back real quick to the presentation. And now, after this time, we have gone through declaring variables, some functions of variables, using those variables and plotting those variables with this that we know today let's go and build a project so either neither samantha or i are electrical engineering students but we had circuit slot so we dug up dug up and we got some data from our circuit slab so yeah and i think before we get to this point uh, is everyone okay at least uh, we need all of you to have matlab open to start this project because sometimes MATLAB takes some time to open and you you are going to just fall back to, back to the work so let me see if, if someone's need someone needs more time please write it on the chat or directly to me all right let's wait a couple of seconds
All right. We go on. Mm, let me check something. Yes, I think I think we are good. Yes, we are good now. Awesome. All right. So let's build a circuit slab data. The project consists, we have a basic circuit laboratory experiment. We have AC voltage measured in two nodes of the circuits, uh, one near to the battery to the source of AC power, and the other one after a couple of elements in within a circuit. And what do we want? We want MATLAB to read that data. We want MATLAB and then we want to use user interaction, as you can see here, user interaction, you're going to see what that means, to get the offset between the, the phase shift between the curves. There are two curves and also we want to know the frequency. They have the same frequency, so any of them will work. You're going to see how we will do it. Giving a quick overview, we have to import our data. We import the data from Excel, and it's going to be in MATLAB the same way we just did. We're going to plot some curves. Okay, we're going to do this plotting, and we're going to have a full graph with everything we need, with legends, with labels, with titles. Then we're going to use some user interaction. It's going to be real cool. MATLAB allows the user to interact with the code, with the figures, and tell something to the code while the code is being run. And finally, we will make some calculations so we can find out the area, I'm sorry, the, um, the phase shift and the uh, um, frequency of the curves. All right. So it's gonna look something like this, not exactly, but something like this, in which you have these curves, both of them plotted at the same time, you have uh, your variables, you have a title, and we're going to get right to it. So, where will we code? Within the zip file we sent you, there's this file called plotting project, uh, that was for sb.m. The m files, .m files are MATLAB files, they're scripts, they're the ones you run, and will run lines of code one after the other. It is in your zip file. So if I go to MATLAB, let's jump to MATLAB real quick and you can see plotting project, the downscore SB, we open it. It's gonna open the MATLAB editor, all right? So you guys should have this code within your zip file. And there, there are almost no lines of code. This, everything in MATLAB that's after a percent sign, it's a comment. So all of these, this is a comment, this is a comment, this is a comment. Now, when I have two percentages, that marks a section. We're not going, we're not going to go what everything a section does, but it's a, it's an awesome way to keep your code organized, right? Because I, I'm working in this, and then I'm working in this section, and then in this section. It's something that's going to be really useful, especially when you come back. And as you can see in the bottom left, you see that the code, it gives you the section that your code has before you actually go to the code. So these three lines, what these lines does, I like to begin my codes with this. It gives me a clean slate every time. So clear, it will delete all the variables in the workspace. So it's gonna go to the memory that MATLAB allocated all these variables and it's gonna just delete the variables. They're no longer gonna be there. So then CLC is gonna clean this. I'm not gonna have any more, um, any more uh, lines of code that I've had previously run in, the common, in the common window. They're gonna go and I'm gonna have it clean. And the close all, it's gonna close all the figures I have, I have opened. So this figure is gonna be deleted as well with the close all command. So let's start them one by one. I hit clear. Oh, let me, let me set it. 
I want to run the code. All of the green lines are not going to be run. So the code is only going to run this. I run this code. Boop. Okay, so you see, there is nothing here, right? All my variables, x, y, time, voltage, they went away. There is nothing here. My command window is now empty. And there is no figure. If I come here, there is the figure was closed, was deleted. So let's begin. We have this data that we need, the project data. That's the file we're looking for. So what I'm going to do, I know how the file looks from inside. Let's see. Let's take a look. We can, we have the time and we can take a look. Okay, this is the same folder I have open here in MATLAB is the same folder. And I say, okay, let me let me go check what the data looks like, right? It would be weird to, to begin the code without looking first. So we open it real quick and here's, okay, we have time. We have signal one and then signal two. And we have, okay, we have some government numbers and just three columns. So what I want to do is I want to create three variables, each of them to be one of these columns. So close, don't forget to close the Excel you're using. Oh, yeah. if, if you keep it open, my lab's going to give you an error. So I'm going to say, all right, I want now one variable called time. Then let's say S1 for signal one, and then S2 for signal two want to be my variables and I wanted to make them equal to read vars, right? The function we said we needed. And I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna make the name. So it's gonna be between apostrophes. It's gonna be a, a, a string. And I'm gonna say, okay, project data dot X L S X. This, as you can see, is this file right here, which is the file I opened previously. Okay, so something that it's you have to keep in mind when you code, run the code. Running the code, it's free. You are not paying for running the code. So you can run it as many times and make as many tests as you want, as you like, and make sure you're running correctly because sometimes you have an error at some point and you haven't run your code in a very long time and then the debugging becomes chaotic. Yeah, and sometimes it's something really simple but you just miss it because it was, you have a lot of code to check now. It's buried, it's buried. So we run it, it uh, reading the files will, will, will always take a little bit. So, okay, you see, time, S1 and S2, let's go double check. Okay, this is more or less what we had before. Okay, this works, this works. All right, I'm gonna close this window. And let's see. Give me one second. Then, all right. Mm -hmm. So now that we read the variables, they are here, right? You can, if you get lost, go back to this. We made the code, the, the comments for you already. So in case you get lost and are not sure what we're doing, you can always go back to those. So let's go to the plotting curves. We want to plot the curves. So if I hit plot and do this time comma S1, and then do this plot the time comma S2, I'm gonna have a problem here. Because what MATLAB does is that MATLAB will create this plot and then it's going to overwrite, overwrite it with this other one. So I don't want that. MATLAB has a way of knowing if I do this is X and Y, then if I, go, if I put a comma and I put then I have X again and Y again, a different Y. So this right here, it's going to let me build the plot with two variables, one and the second variable. Okay, let's try it out. 
All right, now we're looking at our data. This is a square sign, something that passed through an up amp. It has a phase shift, and then we have our frequency from our AC signal. Awesome. If I had done what I was planning to do before, I would get this. Just one of the graphs, because one gets written and then it gets overridden. Mm -hmm. Now I delete this line. But this plot, it's a little bit empty, if I run it correctly. It's a little bit empty, right? It missing titles, labels, legends, and everything else. So let's build some stuff. All right, so our title. We have time versus experimental signals. All right, this is the that title I want to give. If you guys want me to go a little bit slower or to double check on anything, please let us know through the comments. And as always, I just do this line. Let's run it again. It's free. So, okay, I have the same thing I had before and now time versus experimental signals. All right. Now let's do X label. I want to say time in seconds. This time was seconds. And then Y label. I have voltage and volts. Okay, so in this case, all right, so you see read voice is giving you an error. Can you let us know, Tomas, what uh, what the error of read voice is giving you? Um, because most of the times is when you don't have this open. So you have to go, this is the same thing as your folder, right? This is your folder. So when you go. You got, you got a question. Yeah, in the, in the comments. Oh, well, it was direct to you. Okay. Read vars on the fine function variable. Read vars. Hmm. Uh, do you have the data? Read vars. This. Oh, it's the same read vars we're using here. Read vars. Hmm. Oh, let me see. Let's this see. is undefined function or variable. Oh, try to, uh, how do we, um, what, uh, help, help oh, with yeah. bars to see if you have so, it. So, so, so there's this thing, just in case, type this in your, in your command window, Tomas. Help, and then read bars, okay? If MATLAB, if your MATLAB has this function, when you do this, it's going to bring up the documentation. So this is MATLAB telling you how to use this function. Right, use the read virus function, it tells you now it tells something about it, and so on and so forth. Are you able to see this message when you type help read virus? Mm. All mm, right, that's weird. That's weird. Okay, but probably <laughs> you don't have. A toolbox for that. Yeah, there's probably a toolbox for that. I I, I didn't know that that, that that happened. Yeah, I see that that, that you don't have the function. You installed. can show a different one. All right, so let's try. Can you can you type help and xlx xls read? Can you do this that I'm doing in the window? Help xls read and get another function. This, functions allow, this function allows you to do the same thing. It's not that optimized as read bars, I think. That's the difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so you got it. I assume this is a yes. 
And this function is an old one. It's my lab doesn't want you to use it. It's still there because some old codes have them. But now that you, if, if you do have it and not read for us, let's, let's make that happen. Okay. Yes, uh, and this is something important because at the end we're going to talk more about this part. But the nice thing about coding is for you to start having curiosity about it and starting looking for yourself. So in this workshop, you are going to have the basics to start programming in MATLAB. But what is going to make a difference with you learning to program or not learning is the awakening of your curiosity to see why this work and why it doesn't. And in the case that even if you, you should like to find the answer, but if you don't, you find, you have to find a different way of doing it. And that can be fun when you thinking think about it as a fun thing and not as a, I have to do a thing. Okay, awesome, thanks Amand. So what happened? Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. He oh, says that is because it's the 28. Oh, you have my lab 18. Yeah, I think this is a new function. Oh, wow, well, thank you for letting us know. Awesome, all right, that's something we didn't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so now you have XLS3, it's a slower, it's a slower function. So what I did here, just as a trial to remember how this function is used, I hit temp, right, for temporary variable and dot XLS variable, XLS read. You have to leave Samuel. All right, Samuel, we're very sorry. We're gonna have all of this recorded and sent to you. So just make sure you you stay up and and check out the video. Yeah. Nice one. Yeah, good luck with everything. Yeah, hope well, everything's all right. Awesome. So Tomas, you can do this. You can do you can do this lines of code. As you can see, I hit temp. And now temp, it's not a vector because it hasn't a uh, dimension that is one. It's 200 by three. So let me open this real quick. Oh, what is here? I have this as the time, this as signal one, and this as signal two. Okay, so how can we do that? This is gonna be real interesting. You're gonna do, oh, you're gonna do this. Let me clear. CLC. If you if you're just in the in the command window and hit the arrow up, you're gonna have the history of your of your command. So even if you cleared the screen, you can get it back. So let's get the temp again. And in here in your code, instead of this, you're gonna write these lines of code. They're gonna make time, right? I don't have time yet, uh, here, so I'm declaring it. I have the same as you do, Thomas. So I have time equals. I'm going to have temp, which is the variable I did. And I'm going to make an index, okay? So I'm going to choose only certain of the values, some of the values. So every time you're in MATLAB, you have a number of rows and a number of columns. So I have here, this is spaces for rows. And then this space here is for columns. And I want, as I can see in temp, I want all the rows and just the first column to be time. All the rows and the second column to be uh, signal one and all the rows and the third column to be signal two. So if I come here to the command window right here and I say, okay, I want all of the rows. This is telling MATLAB, I want all the rows. And then I want the first column. This is what will happen. Okay, you see, I have time. And it's just this. Oh. All right, so I have this. And this is time and temp. Okay, as you can see, time and temp, they are the same thing. You're going to do the same thing for all the others. You're going to, you're going to have signal one to be temp two but the column two yeah they call the second column and you want signal two oh the signal number two to be the column number three that's what you're gonna want and voila you have them all here the time as one and as two so so we'll give you uh one uh 
couple seconds for you to update these lines of code to your to your file. This is going to be the same thing, right? I don't have temp here, but what would you do? It's do this. So Tomas, this is what your code should look like. So you can make up for the lack of the time bars uh, function. And there are always this kind of thing. Every time in the code, something doesn't work. MATLAB has a solution always. That's something we like to say. Yeah. Or you code it. That is or kind of more fun, but it takes more time. Yeah. Or you code it yourself. All right. Let me, let me then run again my code because I made some changes. I don't know if I messed up something. So let me just run it real quick. Okay. It's good. I have a Y label, an X label, a title. Let me add a legend. My legend is going to be signal one, signal two. Okay, so what you see, title, X label, Y label, and a legend. This is going to tell me which curve it's which. Let's run it again. Oh, look how pretty, right? So I have signal one, signal two. I can have any word in here, any type of uh, message. And those are the one I chose. Okay. And one last thing, I want to add a grid. I want to have the little lines with the text. You don't need to have a semicolon for this kind of command. But there is not a problem if you have it. There's not a problem if you do. So you have this. And you can access to MATLAB all of these things. So let's move on to the user interaction. This is going to be fun. OK, so MATLAB has the function called gInput. gInput is a function in which it, MATLAB asks you to choose a variable, a value from your plot, somewhere in your plot. So the way it works, if I put gInput and I have two, I, it means it's, enough, it's going to ask for two values. I need two points to know a frequency, right? You need the two peaks or two values. So I'm going to make x comma y. They're going to be both x and y points, OK? So stay with me a little bit. And if I do this, I want to add an instruction. I want to add an instruction for the user. So I say title, choose. Select two consecutive. Yeah. Select two consecutive peaks. OK. I'm going to run this. Of the same wave. OK. Just yeah. to be we'll, we'll, we'll real sure. quick. OK. Mm -hmm. So you see, I, this is my mouse, and I can choose this MATLAB it's asking me to choose two things so all right I'm going to choose this first peak uh, boop and then I click once and then I click twice boop okay so as you see I have x and y and they were created here x and y I have them both over here so x1 and y1 are the first point I chose and x2 and y2 are the second point. I chose the coordinates for the second point. Mm. No, I, I think uh, are the x coordinates and the y coordinates. Yeah. Okay. So x, x and x, the first value of x and the first value of y oh, are okay, the yes, coordinates yes. for the first point I chose. All right. So. This one, it's going to be for the frequency. I want to, uh, so I'm going to call it XF and YF for the frequency, okay? And then let's say I want to add for the title. I'm going to change the title again to select uh, peak of each curve. This is going to be for the shift right, the change in the shift. So I'm going to have x face 
shift xp and yp is going to be equal to the same as before g input two. i have i need two points you can have g input to be any amount of points whatever you want so if i run this once again i get it this is for select two consecutive peaks okay i select one peak uh, two peaks, all right, then I select one peak in the middle of the square wave and the second peak. Boop. Okay, so we see you have X, F, and Y, F as we did before for the, for the frequency and X, P, and Y, P for the phase shift. So the same thing for X, P, the first and the first coordinates of X and Y P are the first point I selected. I clicked on the screen. So again, uh, we we should skip the scatter, maybe. No? Uh, yes, we can skip that, but we we have to calculate the frequency yeah, with yeah, the points. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's going to ah, be in, okay. in the final calculation. Okay, so let's go to the final calculation. So we want to know what is the frequency of the curves. So the frequency is stored within X, F, and Y, F. So the height, if I go back to my, to, my, to my graph, the height doesn't matter that much as long as I have two equal, um, two equal points in the, in the graph, I don't care that much about which one is higher or lower. What I care is the distance. So I want this distance between these two points. Okay. So practically the period the of period. the wave. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate. So let's calculate the period itself. The period is going to be equal to, and you have to be really careful about this because you may choose, you know, this one first and this one first, or you may choose this one first and then the other. So because I don't care about the order, I'm going to put an absolute value. How do we do that, MATLAB? ABS for absolute. And we want the X, F for the frequency. We want the, let's begin with the first value, X, F1 minus X, F2. If you do this, X, oh, in the command window, I'm doing this a test real quick, X, F1 this is going to be the first value so it's going to be this first value of x f1 6.018 if i do the same thing in a number two it's going to be the second value you see 2.89 all right so this is going to be the period once again let me run everything i have one peak, two peak, I have one peak, two peak. Okay, I have the value called period, and this is the period. Now, because this is in seconds, we can convert it straight away to parts. So uh, let's say the frequency, it's equal to one over the period because period is just one value and not a vector you can use this without the dot if period if i had you know different curves with different periods and each of them was a value in a vector i would have to use this dot but i don't need to right now so I'm yeah gonna leave but if you use it now there is no problem yeah there is no problem my lab's gonna do the same thing so um now i'm just going to copy this line so i don't have to run the code right now and all right i have the frequency yes and this is something that not everybody knows but using the common window just to try some things before adding it to the code or to visualize if it will work is something that we should take advantage in matlab and it's not always available on other programming languages. Yeah, other programming languages that allow you to, you know, test your code like this and then put it into your thing. It has to run it every time. So, 
let's go and calculate the same thing for the shift. So we have the, and the shift is gonna be in seconds, right? We don't need the, the shift in anything else. So the shift is gonna be equal to the, or the delay, let's call it delay. And I have the X, well, the same thing here, right, for the period, but with not the XF, but XP. So I have the absolute value. I have XP of one minus XP, the second amount. Oh, and always in MATLAB, make sure you have your parentheses right. Uh, I had, you know, you can be, happen sometimes that you are two hours debugging a code and the problem is just parentheses. So those are very important. So XP1 minus XP2 is gonna give you the delay. Let's put it here and just try it out. Oh, you see I have delay. Okay, that's my delay. Awesome, we are nearing the end of our project. So let's say I want this. Let me, let me run it just one more time. And once I finish this, before going, I want to go back to the original title. To this title, I wanna go back to it. So I'm gonna copy and paste it right here. So yeah. I want the, the, the final title not to be a, you know, a command, something I want the user to select. Mm -hmm. I want to be the actual title of my figure. Yeah, and when you do a program like this, it's important to think what will the user need? Because if you program it, you know, okay, first I should select the peaks uh, of the same curve, and then I should select the peaks of different curves. But the people that is going to use your code or even yourself in two, two or three months won't remember it. So it's better to you, for you to think about it and leave instructions. Mm -hmm. So now that we're going to run all our 34 lines of code, let's click the run. So it's going to ask again for one peak and then select two consecutive peaks of the same curve. Then select, select a peak of each curve. I select here boop, and then boop. And I get this, all right, I get a frequency and a delay, awesome. And now what happens if I come here and say, hey, just, you know, what is the frequency delay? You would have to come here and look for them, right? You have to come here to the workspace variables and find them. But I want to be more high tech. I want MATLAB to tell me from the beginning, hey, this is the frequency and this is the delay. And that's some function we call f print f. This is the last function we're gonna learn today. Awesome. So the way this function works, I have a way that my data is, I want the data to be displayed. So I wanna have first some text and then the numbers I have. So I, let's say, I wanna say the, frequency is, I have an equal sign. This is gonna be a string. So these are just words. MATLAB is gonna print this. Yeah, the words that you want to tell the user. That you want to tell the user. So how does MATLAB then insert this value? I want this 0 0.3172 to be inserted here, but I can just write, if I write just 0 0.3172, it's only going to work for this curve. If I select a different file, then I will need to, you know, run it and then change it here. So it's going to be hard coded and we do not want that. We want everything to be automatic, as automatic as possible, smooth. So this function has this way. I put a percentage sign and F, which is a floating point. It's a type of variable. You don't have uh, to worry it about means that uh, decimal number yeah it's a decimal number right so i have a comma here and i put the variable that i want to be displayed here so this thing is going to be just a placeholder for this variable all right yeah. and i'm going to add this slash n you're going to see later what it does and let me run everything again mm -hmm. 
just make sure everything runs because sometimes you make a mistake and then the code doesn't run and then everything seems a little bit awful. All right, so you see here, the frequency is equal sign to this, 0 0.318662. Okay, which is even more decimals are shown here. So there is a shortcut I can do of putting 0.4. Or 0.3, let's say I just want three decimals. All right, so. Oh, you see? I have this. So practically, the placeholder is always a percentage sign followed by something that tells you what are you going to receive. Mm -hmm. In this case, F tells you that it's a decimal. If, F I, if I put the letter I, it's an integer. Mm -hmm. So it can be, you know, if it's one, two, three, four, it's gonna just print the integer. It can be an S for a string. It can be, it can be anything actually. Yeah, but F, I think you use it a lot because it's decimal. It, it, it's the most used. Yeah. So I want both. I want to know the frequency and I want to know the delay F print. I say the delay is equal to and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna write a percentage, 0.3, I want the same three decimals as before, F, and then a slash, N. All right, and now I don't want frequency to be to be printed here. I, I, don't, I don't need this value right now. What I need is the delay. Okay, so when I have the delay, and it's gonna be placed in this line, Oh, so let's say in this case, I forgot to have the backslash N. I'm gonna copy this line into the workspace. As you can see, the same line. Boom. Oh, it's F print F. I'm sorry. Let me fix it here. The delay is something. It's gonna happen this. MATLAB is gonna, is gonna print it before the command line. Right, it's not gonna hit enter by itself. What I need, what I need is, well, let's let's do this. What I need is MATLAB to tabulate, to make, you know, I want MATLAB go to the next line. So I just hit a backslash, you know, it's in the other way. And then, and, and letter N. This is vertical tabulation. You can have horizontal and you can have many more things. There are different options there. Yeah, so. printf is a huge function. It's amazing. But this is a very useful way to use it. Oh, I hit enter and I have the delay is 1.046, which is this. Awesome. That's all we need. So at this point, we have finished the project. So I'm going to run it one last time for me. And I'm going to say, OK. I want to have select two consecutive peaks, this peak and then this peak, then this and that peak. Okay, so I have the frequency is 0 0.32 and the delay is 1.076. I forgot to add again the slash n. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so if I put it right here. Awesome. So now that we finished the project, this is the project we were gonna do. We finished what we wanted, which was to plot, to report the AC voltage and plot, plot both signals and find the offset and frequency. So now that we do have the project, do you guys have any question? This is the moment to ask about the question, to ask about um, to ask about a function, to ask about syntax. Yeah, or even if you got lost at some point, you can ask now because we have a scheduled 15 minutes for questions. So feel free to ask. All right. So given what we have here, you're trying it right now. All right, let us know if it works. 
Hope it does. Let me clear my screen, clear everything. Yeah, you can run it one more time. Please. Let's run it one more time. I mean, there's no harm, it's free. Okay. Can you if, you, if you're picking the peaks correctly, can you show me again? All right. So I'm running it, run. I have, I have this. Do you have this, Thomas? Can you see what I'm looking right now? Something like this with a G input. And or, then or probably can just yes, another same step. You got it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So I come here and I do click. Click with the left mouse. Uh, the anyone would work, but use the left. Beep. I clicked. It doesn't show anything, but it's clicked. Then I come to the other one and I hit. Uh, click. Okay. Now, then select the peak of each curve. I come to the middle, what I think is the middle of this flat uh, top of the curve. And I hit, oh, all right. And then I come to the peak of the previous one because I want to, want, I want to find the offset between them. So I come to the peak of the other curve, the same one I selected before. It could be a different one. But let's do this one and boom. And this is what I got. Well, one way if you want to check that you select that it's a, the right points are selected, you can see here in XP and XF, I think, the coordinates in X and Y, and you can check that in the figure. Uh, you use the data Oh, yeah, you have f print as your function, and the function is f print f. You, mm -hmm. There's an f at the end. You can see it? Maybe maybe, maybe that says what's the problem with the... Yes, you're missing the... With the printing function. All right, let's see. Okay, the frequency is 0 0.319, and what's your frequency? Uh, 0 0.320, so, yeah, same thing. Yeah, yeah. Since we are picking it by hand because we want to experience how G input works, it doesn't to be that exact. If we had another kind of function, we could do that, but we don't really do that. This is a fun way to use MATLAB and useful too. There you go. Yeah, and the, and the delay is two point zero. Ah, then then you're just picking different places that I am. Ah, uh, it doesn't matter the delay. I mean. You can choose this. You can choose uh, anything else. Uh, just doing what? Do it one more time too, and uh, you and. So okay. if I select these two. Yes, oh. because we're selecting those uh, those points for the frequency, and then for that he always selects the middle of the wave. If I do this, let's see if I get the same number as you do. It, it should be really similar. Oh yeah, you get the yeah. same hey, number as. I him. selected the one in the middle oh. and then the one in the right. What I had done before is the middle, the one in the left. That's mm, what would happen. Because it's, more, it's, it's closer to the left. Yeah. Yeah, but that depends on which one of them you call their first curve. Yes. Oh, there's something cool that you can add. And you can say 3F and then HC for hearts. And then 3, each and the F, seconds. And when you do this, you get, oh, 0 0.39 hearts and 2.092 seconds. All right. So, um, I hope that, well, as you can see, Tomas, your code is running correctly and everything is running good. It just depends on which points you select. So, for this point, we have finished our project and as always you will have access to this everything good yeah it's, it he has a kind of different delay this time yeah it is depending on which it, uh, mm -hmm. which points you select because these waves are not exactly the same so they don't have the same period so yeah mm -hmm. depending which ones you touch it will be different delay. Yeah, but 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 what we need is you to have those numbers. If you have those lines working in your MATLAB, then you're good. 
uh, than stress it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yes, you, you can ask us later any other questions mm -hmm. about this too. Because this part is kind of more electrical, I think. Yeah, that's that, more electrical that coding. Than yeah. Yeah, which one is the correct one? Mm -hmm. So, uh, Samantha and I, you know, we coded the project. Samantha and I uh, took the code a little bit ahead for, you know, just to show you guys. So, this is what we got. So, right now, you are able to do all of this that you're seeing. You are able to do to get um, a black. You change the color of the background, to change the color of the curve by yourself, to uh, change the color and the text color of the legend, to add more than one graph on the same figure. This is all the same figure in MATLAB. To make Fourier transforms, this is an, an amazing function in MATLAB. It's really easy, a Fourier transform, and you can do all of this now. You have everything you need to do it right now. And I think that you guys just had a very thorough initiation and in the basics of MATLAB. And I want to leave you again with Samantha so she can tell you where you are and where you can be. Okay, hello again. So today you started at point A and now you are at point B. So now you can do everything that Tomas just showed you. Now, the only part, the important part is that you have awoken your curiosity about coding through this workshop. So now you can ask yourself, so how do I get that black background now? And the answer is you now have the potential to Google it. You can Google it and add it to your code and try it. And that's the most important part about programming. So now that you know the basics, the basics, how to create a variable, how to see within a variable, and even use the common window for debugging and trying code, you can start looking for specific things that you would like to add to, out, to, add to your code. And besides that, we also develop a workbook where we listed all the functions that we used during this workshop and also listed some functions that will be that are really interesting for you to learn about and that you can use to enhance your uh, your current code to look something similar to this to the yeah can you show yeah to that one so please uh, download that that workbook the workbook is in the chat now but we, um, we also tip. can send can send it to your email. However, now you are in this point where you can do this, but there are a lot of more things for you to learn. For example, you can get a, to a point where you learn about imaging, advanced plotting, GUI, and even more. The something important now is that you have connected with your motivation for coding. That's the most important thing from this workshop, besides knowing the basics, that you have found your motivation to code. If you have that motivation, you are going to learn one way on another or another. And that you have awoken that curiosity. And next week we have our workshop where we are going to show you how to use a GUI in MATLAB, that is a graphical user interface. Here you can see a little bit of the work that we will, will be doing. This is something that we did for a graphical interface before. It's really cool. And the most important part is that you just can uh, try different data in an easier way without having to do the code again or anything. So that we will learn next week. But besides that, we will have another workbook in which we will develop, develop alongside you a plan for you to learn to code. So today you have reconnected with your motivation and curiosity. And next week you can develop your own plan to make sure that you are com committed to that motivation. This is actually the most important part to make sure that in the future you will learn MATLAB and programming. Oh yes, and also in, in the meantime, you want to know more about us or even us 
ask us some questions about this workshop or the one that is coming, you can follow us on Instagram as at samantha.belen or go to our webpage that is samantha.belen.com. There you will find tips, quality content. Even we have an option for one-on-one -on -one tutoring for you and more free workshops there. Uh, you can have access to all of these. Uh, I hope you made the most of it and start making your plans to learn to code. So we are perfectly on schedule and do you guys have questions? Uh, you can either turn on your mic and, or go to the chat. At this point, we would love to hear uh, any question you have at this moment. Will the meeting, the next one, will it be the same time next week, uh, same meeting ID, all that? Um, we, were, we, we, we will check on the meeting ID, which is probably going to be the same one, but the time it is going to be the same one. Yeah, Monday. Uh, and also about that, it will be really good for you if you can let us your email here in the chat, because we usually send a reminder of the workshop and also all the materials that you use today, all the workbooks that we have, we will send it through email. Um, besides that, what, what else we send? Ah, and also the recording for, from today, we will send it through email yeah. and it will get directly to your email. So that's, that's a really good option for anyone that is interested. Uh, yes, and I think that's all. If you have any questions about all resources or how is, what are we going to learn next week? You can tell us. Mm. Oh, thank you, Paola. Oh, thanks. <laughs> okay. All right. Anything else on the table? I think we are good. I think we're good. So thank you, Andy. Mm -hmm. All right. Hope you liked it. Oh, yes. And, and do our workshop. There we have even more important questions for you to answer and to commit to coding. It's really fun to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A workbook. Okay. So guys, uh, we're gonna write down your emails so we can send you all of the, the you know the recordings and the materials for this workshop, and you get a reminder for the workshop next week. We're gonna do a GUI, a graphical user interface, and those ones you can build onto apps, and you can send it to people. You can compile them and have them as you know a, a standalone desktop apps. You can build your own apps from MATLAB. Mm -hmm. So I hope you guys are interested in that. And I hope to see you guys there. Okay. Bye. Bye.